Hello again, my name's John and welcome to another video on cheese making. This time I'd like to show you how I make my Parmesan cheese at home. You can pause the video at any time to check out what equipment and ingredients you need to make this great Italian cheese. I'll add a link in the description for where I buy all the ingredients and equipment I use in this video. Everything is available from Goat Nutrition at www.gnltd.co.uk Always start your cheese project by sterilising all of the equipment. I boil mine for 10 minutes in the pan that I'm going to use. This is the double boiler setup I use. It's much better and gentler for heating the milk than using direct heat. Right, let's get started. This parmesan recipe calls for one imperial gallon, that's 4.5 litres of 4% full cream unhomogenized milk, plus one gallon of 2% semi-skimmed milk. You'll find it all in the ingredients list at the start of the video. For this parmesan recipe I need to heat the milk up to 34 celsius, that's 92 fahrenheit. Now that the milk is up to the target temperature I can add the first ingredient, which is a quarter teaspoon of calcium chloride diluted in 60 ml of unchlorinated water. I just use bottled water for this. Give the milk a good stir to make sure it's all mixed in thoroughly. An important point here, even though the heat is turned off, I notice the temperature creeping up a bit, so I've taken the pan off the double boiler. Watch out for that because it can catch you out. Ok, a quick word about the culture needed. When making a parmesan style cheese, we'll be dealing with relatively high temperatures later on in the process, so we need a starter that can handle the heat. So I'd be using what's known as a thermophilic culture, as opposed to the mesophilic culture I used in making the cheddar cheese. Another ingredient needed is a quarter teaspoon of lipase powder. Lipase powder is used to add flavour and a smoother texture to homemade cheeses. Allow the culture and the leap paste powder two minutes to rehydrate. Then stir it in for one full minute.
Now cover the pan and let the milk ripen for 40 minutes. Time to add the rennet. For this cheese it's half a teaspoon, again diluted in 60 ml of unchlorinated water. That's about a quarter of a cup. Then stir it in for one full minute. The bits floating around are just butterfat probably caused by the stirring. It all becomes part of the finished cheese in the end. Once the rennet has been thoroughly mixed in, cover the pan and let the milk set for 45 minutes. After 45 minutes, check for a clean break. If it's still a bit runny, give it a bit more time. In my case, the milk has set and it's now time to cut the curds. I'll start by cutting approximately half inch spaces one way, then the same across the other way, with a few undercuts later. But I need to get the curds even smaller, so I'll use a whisk. The ultimate aim is to get the curds down to about pea size. Use the whisk very gently as shown in the video. Now that the curds are a bit smaller, I let them rest for 10 minutes before I start the next stage. The next stage is a little tricky. What I have to do is bring the temperature up to 52 Celsius, that's 124 Fahrenheit, but it has to be done very slowly over the space of one hour whilst constantly stirring, mostly with a whisk but sometimes with a spoon. The idea is to reduce the size of the curds even more. This will happen as the curds get warmer and expel more whey. Right, I've lit the gas and set the timer for 60 minutes. If I think it's warming up too quickly, I turn off the gas for a while and then turn it back on if it's not rising quickly enough. It's quite easy once you get the hang of it. Okay, I've 
jumped ahead to 30 minutes and the temperature is rising steadily and I'm bang on track so on we go to the 60 minutes. Notice how much smaller the curds are getting as the heat rises. Ok, we're at the 60 minutes and the target temperature is spot on. At 52 Celsius, that's 124 Fahrenheit. So mission accomplished for this stage. Now we can give the curds and my arm a rest for 5 minutes while I prepare a cheesecloth lined colander in the sink. The next step is to drain the curds, so I put a sterilised cheesecloth lined colander in the sink and just before the 5 minutes are up I pour boiling water over the colander. This does two things, it gets rid of any germs that may have found their way onto the cloth and it warms everything up. Once the 5 minutes are up, pour the whole pan through the strainer. If you want to keep the whey, strain it into a dish or a large bowl. Once you get all of the curds out of the pan, cover with the cheesecloth and let it rest for a further 5 minutes. In the meantime, prepare a cloth lined 1.5 kg or a 3 lb mould. Once the 5 minutes are up, start filling the mould to get it ready for its first pressing. I got distracted for a couple of minutes sorting out cameras for the video so the curds have been resting for about 3 minutes longer. That's why they've matted together a little more than usual, but they'll be okay. Right, here we go with the first of three presses. The first press will be at 10 pounds of pressure for one hour. The second, 20 pounds for two hours. And the third and final press will be 50 pounds for 12 hours. After each press, take out the cheese and turn it over for an even pressing.
And now the second press, 20 pounds of pressure for two hours. Once again, take out the cheese, flip it over and back in the press for the last time at 50 pounds of pressure for 12 hours. Notice how the cheese is starting to look a lot more solid now. There will always be a few cloth marks on the cheese but that won't affect the finished cheese in any way. A quick word about the cheese press. I have a detailed video on how this press works on my channel and where you can get hold of one. They're very reasonably priced and extremely well made and should last you a lifetime of cheese making. Just hit the cheese press button on the screen and it'll take you to the press video. If you want to take a quick look at the press video, hit the button and this video will stay exactly where it is until you come back. An extra hygiene precaution is to spray hands and surfaces with white vinegar. This helps kill off any unwanted mould that may harm the cheese while it's ageing. Right, it's 12 hours later and it's time to get the cheese out of the press and into the 20% salt or brine bath. To make up a 20% salt solution, I do it by weight. See, if you add 800 grams of water, you would need 200 grams of cheese or kosher salt. Don't use ordinary table salt, as it contains iodine and other chemicals. That would kill off the good bacteria in the cheese. And as an extra precaution, I only use bottled water to make up the solution. This brine will last for months, by the way. I've had this one for six months. I just add a little more salt now and then. Another quick tip. Before putting the cheese in the container, take out half the solution first, as it's too expensive to waste on an overflow. Also, if your cheese doesn't float, then that means there's not enough salt in the water. I like to fold up a cheese mat to help keep the cheese submerged when the lid's on. The cheese has to stay in the brine for 20 hours, turning it over halfway through. Right, 20 hours have flown past and it's time to take the cheese out of the brine. Pat the cheese with a paper towel to remove any excess liquid. 
Now cover it with a clean cloth and allow the cheese to air dry for two to three days at room temperature. After three days the cheese is dry to the touch and it's time to get the cheese ready for aging. There's a few ways to age the cheese. My favourite way is to vacuum pack it. This next step is probably not absolutely necessary but before vacuum packing I give my cheeses an application of this protective cheese coating. This is just an extra precaution I use against mould. I just use my hand to apply it all over the cheese. Once done it takes about 3 hours to completely dry. Vacuum packing eliminates the need to keep the humidity right, which I found difficult to achieve in the past, especially with cheeses like Parmesan, which have to be aged for a long time. I only have to worry about keeping the temperature at 13 degrees Celsius 55 Fahrenheit, and my wine cooler does that perfectly. There we go, one wheel of parmesan cheese made at home. Now this cheese has to be stored at a temperature of 13 degrees Celsius, that's 55 Fahrenheit. And like I said earlier, I keep mine in a wine cooler. During the first two weeks, I'll turn this once every day and then I'll turn it once every week and it has to be aged for at least one year. Well thanks again for watching. If you've enjoyed the video why not try my baguette or my cheddar videos. Please like, share and comment and if you would like to see my next video please hit the subscribe button. Bye for now.